Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is a fantastic day. It is early, ODAR 30 here in the U.S., and it is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Bulgaria, and I got Irina Slav stopping by the podcast today. Welcome, Irina. Thank you for having me yet again, Stu. Oh, I can't believe you haven't got tired of me yet. Oh, I'll tell you, I get my arena fixed today. And and uh, right before the podcast, you showed me your cat. And then you were telling me your cat story of the cat. Does, it mom. chases mice, but it doesn't catch them in the house. <laughs> tell yeah, me. it's very, very useful this way. So you and your husband were chasing a mouse and the cat yeah. sat in the corner and watched? Or did he chase? No, he, he chased as well. All three of us chased the mouse. But only one of us could actually, you know, catch it with their teeth. But he didn't because it was too big. I thought you said you caught it with your teeth there for a second. Well, I, I, I was caught like, it with my hand. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Oh, Irina. Oh my goodness. Uh, that where's a camera when you need it? that would have gone viral. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, now, so if I can picture you and your husband and the cat chasing the mouse, you catch it. It's almost like the uh, world leaders trying to catch dollars to pay for their uh, <laughs> their energy transition, and since the wind farms and the and the money is running out for wind farms, I'm seeing such a huge push for the carbon taxes, the carbon everything else, and on your Substack. Your Substack is irinaslav.substack.com. You had one go out, and it was called the Carbon Massacre. What a no, cool it article! It should have been. Thank you, but it should have been Carbon uh, Carnage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was great. What were you thinking when you wrote this? I was thinking how mad I am with people who appear to be incapable of planning in advance you know if i want to do something i will plan for it in a way that will ensure that i get to this something taking into account all the factors or at least all the factors i can think of that could affect it one way or another mm -hmm. i could probably come up with an example but not right now because my brain is slow maybe it's a later point <laughs> but the thing is I, I will be taking a lot of things into account both favorable and unfavorable what i will not be doing would not be doing is making assumptions that only uh, feed into my favorable scenario you know uh -huh. this is going to happen because i want it to happen which is exactly what our brave leaders have been doing. Well, you know, you also uh, point out a great point in here, and that is um, the deindustrialization of the UK and Germany and the EU is because of bad economic decisions and bad energy policies, and that, oh, right. emissions are, are going down by 19%. <laughs> So GDP. Yeah, but, but it's because you guys are bad managers and putting in bad yeah. policies it has yeah. nothing to do with your goodness of increasing right the gdp increasing the output it's like a second order of magnitude of like stupid <laughs> yes and it's what the smart ones the actually intelligent analysts and commentators have been saying already for years uh -huh. You cannot have lower emissions and higher GDP, not at this point in human civilization. Right. Because as you reduce emissions, you reduce them thanks to things like wind and solar and lower energy consumption. But lower energy consumption right. means lower productivity, right. means lower economic growth i mean it, it really is not that hard to grasp i've only studied economics for about a semester and i know this because it's really too simple and obvious to not be able to grasp it. Yet, I 
refuse to understand that. You are so logical and have a actual brain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> having a brain matters. Um, you know, um, I think some of our leaders in the world have the brain power of a potato bud. Uh, I don't yeah. think they're, no. Um, anyway, so when you sit back and we take a look at uh, the CO2 emissions, I mean, we take a look at Putin and we take a look, and I, you and I have teased over the years that I have a lousy Putin imitation. Yeah, very, because you've never, let, you know, you've never heard him speak. I, I listened to him on the Tucker Carlson. And right? You see how soft spoken, how oh, calm he I is. Was, I was so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now you can work on your Putin imitation. Uh, now I can work on it. But I'll tell you what, um, he, he, you know, you know, the old, there's an old saying in some of from uh, in the U S from some of the movies, I don't need those thinking badges is a joke out of a movie. I, hey, I don't need those thinking badges like badges, ID badges or sheriff badges. Putin, he can sit back and you've always had this wonderful saying it's uh, sanctions don't work as intended. I could almost make a t-shirt. Uh, I don't need no stinking sanctions uh, or something like, you know, from Putin saying sanctions don't hurt or they, you know, um, he's doing great. Sanctions. <laughs> no. I mean, it's probably no laughing matter to the ones enforcing the sanctions, but it's true. I mean, the International Monetary Fund is saying it and the World Bank is saying it and they're hardly putting puppets or whatever. But yes, what Reuters called a long-running Russian narrative about sanctions hurting Europe more than Russia is not a Russian narrative. It's a fact. It, it is. It, the consumers, uh, there was also another movie uh, years ago, Joe Pesci uh, was in this thing and he always says, you always get uh, screwed in the drive through. Uh, so, you know, uh, I always say, you know, people, uh, the consumers get, yeah, yeah, the consumers get it always. Yeah, they're get the ones who bear the brunt of the stupid de decisions that politicians make. And yeah, it's been like that since, you know, since there was society. It, um, where do you see um, Bulgaria ending up in all of this? Because it seems like, is Bulgaria going to be, um, how are the politics there going on right now? Horrible. We have a puppet government. We have a, a set of yes men doing whatever the European Union and the US wants them to do, oh. uh, even at the expense of their own citizens. Now, we have massive inflation, and they're fighting it by raising the minimum wage. But raising the minimum wage means that social security and health security also rises. So people working for minimum wage don't really feel any difference because they're paying more. And all of us are paying more in social security and health security. They're just trying to, you know, to curry favors with voters, but it's impossible because they're a minority government. Wow. It... It's the, the, you know, the most uh, disgusting sort of coalition between two parties who campaigned against each other. And they're now working together. And they ended up working together because they get to share the power. Um, sounds like the U.S. <laughs> yeah, probably in, in a certain way. Yeah, they were prepared to go to any lengths just to be in power and get some, you know, European funds. You know, uh, I'm not a, a political fan of politicians from either side. Uh, I would, uh, I would vote. Politicians are crap, most of them. Yeah. Thank you. I knew I liked you. Yeah, yeah, it goes with the job description. Uh, I would vote to remove every politician and throw them all out. Just get rid of everybody. You know, this reminds me of uh, a Terry Pratchett book. Uh, it's uh, He wrote fantasy novels, satirical fantasy novels, and there's... Um, there's a 
fantastical place called the Forex a continent, which is loosely based on Australia. Yep. But uh, the, the main character was visiting there and uh, there was some conversation involving prison and politicians and the local, right. the local tour guide or whatever uh, said, well, we throw all our politicians in jail the moment they're elected, don't you? <laughs> You're pretty smart to save you the trouble to wait for them to mess everything up and then not go to prison. So uh, as soon as they win an election, they go to prison so you can avoid the mess up. Isn't that a wonderful idea? And they can rule from their prison cell. I think that would be fantastic. Um, you know, Tom Cruise had a movie years ago called The Minority Report where they were starting to predict who was going to do a murder and things. And so you went and arrested them before they did the murder. So uh, since most U.S. politicians go in and their average yearly salary is $170,000, but like we have one with AOC, I think whatever the number is she's worth 20 million dollars now what how dang um you know and then you take a look at the other politicians that um are multi multi multi-millionaires and their investments uh kind of coincide with legislation that has been going on so a little insider really? trading. i'm shocked do you yeah. know one of the things that uh, I find it hard to forgive America, the United States, is turning what is essentially a, a scam, not, not, well, not a scam, but it should be a criminal lobbyism. It, 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 it's oh, not right because legislators is. vote on issues based on lobbyism. Not the people. It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be legal. It shouldn't be acceptable. But it is. It's actually a very lucrative profession. I I suppose. Um, you bring up a gigantic problem with the U.S. Um, lobbyists and energy. You just nailed it. We have the, um, oh, uh, I forgot the act, the Jones Act. The Jones Act prohibits any shipping between ports yeah. in the U.S. from all these years ago. And so we're sitting here, the Jones Act, so we have all the LNG in the world. And let me go through this here for a sec. All the LNG in the world we can ever use, but we can't even ship it from Texas to Boston. Because we don't have any LNG tankers because they're not flagged by the U.S. or owned by the U.S. or own this. It Why can't is... somebody buy an LNG carrier? Just one? Yeah. I, I, hey, what's what's a few billion between friends to buy one yeah, of those silly things? Just one. So no, here's it's the... really stupid piece of legislation. Yeah. I, I don't get this. It's the lobbyists for i think it's like 200 union members uh on shipbuilders that are holding up the entire u.s shipping model to be independent but how much money do these people make from this act to justify its continued staying in effect I don't know what it is, but it, there's got to be some graft or something in there. Yeah, yeah, somebody I, must be making money. Like, it, it does not make sense to me. Um, but the union, now, Bulgaria does not have uh, a car manufacturer, do you, in uh, Bulgaria? Yeah. Um, yeah. China EVs are lining up on the border. You know, they're going to be dropping them, like we talked about on the energy reality. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we all these cheap cars are going to be flooding in, but the union in the U.S. has killed all these jobs by supporting the Biden administration. You can't buy this kind of stupid. They're the union is representing the employees, and they have killed the jobs. Why politicians? Uh, now the unions have a place. Are there a lot of unions in Bulgaria? There are unions, yeah. But do they kill jobs? 
No, they, they try <laughs> to prevent the killing of jobs, but <laughs> they, they have also become, I haven't followed unions lately. They okay. were really loud in the 90s when I started paying attention and, uh, you know, reading, watching news and this sort of thing. Uh, but essentially, they have morphed into into what I expect most unions are in the US or elsewhere. You know, just uh, basically corporations. They're right. doing it for profit. But in in uh, profiting from their actions, they also right. tend to benefit their members. I expect. I think there's a huge benefit to to properly run unions is a huge benefit, especially when colleges have gone totally uh, out to lunch. A college education is worthless in the United States. I would it's rather be a union. What you have done to your educational system, not you personally. I'm sure you're not involved, but it, it pains me to see this. It pains me to see it in the, in Britain. But these places, these universities, these world-renowned universities are turning into cesspools of propaganda. You know, Irina, I wanted to retire and be a college professor. That was my goal. I was going to be successful in business. And then I never want to retire. And I wanted to be a college professor. Not now. Oh, why don't you? Because I'm a podcast host. I get to talk to people from all around you the world. You can do both. Because do what? You, know, these young, you can do both. Because these young people need some common sense in their lives. You, uh, you can't survive in a, um, uh, a climate like that because you will be taken down and out. Why do I need that headache? I mean, I can... How is this possible? Do what? How is this possible? I'm just being loudly frustrated here. It, it is horrible. Um, I can impact with great leaders like you, David and Tammy, more people than I could in a classroom. Those, those classrooms are so indoctrinated. So I'm working on a homeschooling project with all of our content to try to help get homeschooling material because homeschooling has become is going to become such a big thing in the united states yeah by necessity by necessity so let me uh, know if i can help in any way because this is a, an excellent idea well uh irena it's funny you should say that i am trying to work out enough money to get programmers to take things like the energy reality that you and i are on and then we can pay for that content to pay to have it go to uh, homeschooling and have the testing and the curriculum and everything done so that energy leaders like yourself and David and Tammy can only do creation, content creation, but yet have it paid for to go to the uh, schools and have it organized. So I'm trying to get good uh, energy policies in the hands of parents uh, and physics, fiscal You're responsibility. I see, I think I can have more of an impact doing that, being a podcast host, CEO yeah. of my own company and, and having fun with you and Tammy and David and letting you guys put up with my stupid jokes on every Monday morning. Well, you're a joy to have on the podcast. Come on. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the key thing is that I love your sense of humor in trying to talk about Thanks. these really serious problems. And for our listeners, again, it is Irina Slav .substack.com, And I love your uh, listen button on your you read these things and it is i do and sometimes it takes as many as four takes to do it properly i'm sorry uh, i don't know how actors feel you know it is not fun i i love it and i want to just give you this because i've been sitting here working and i'll have my wife walk by and she's like is irena on? No, no i'm listening to her so i get my irena fix by listening and the sense of humor 
comes through even more with the way you read. So uh, this is an, a big advertisement for your substack. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I I steal Why all your you material. Give you an agent's fee or something. Uh, uh, anyway, well, Irina, what's coming around the corner for you in the next few weeks? Um, well, I'm I'm thinking about something about carbon prices. Oh, carbon, not carbon prices. I'm sorry, carbon taxes. But uh, it's a work in progress. I haven't planned a publication date. But I would like next week. I'm thinking of doing a story on the cocoa crisis. I don't know if you've heard about it. Bloomberg wrote about it. A very, very good substack. I looked into it in detail. And I'm seeing certain parallels between the cocoa situation and the oil situation in terms of supply. Right. So I'm going to write something about this. In the meantime, buy cocoa and buy chocolate because prices are going to go uh, through the roof. Why is that? Uh, because uh, the short of it, uh, per Javier Blas from Bloomberg, who's yeah, I like Javier. Details, yeah, yeah, he's very good. Uh, well, basically, most of the cocoa in the world is produced by small and very poor farmers. The right. big money goes to the processors, the middlemen, and the chocolate right. uh, manufacturers. Uh, so these poor farmers, people who actually grow the cocoa trees, do not get enough money to invest in renewing their cocoa forests, plantations. Oh. So trees are getting older and as they get older, they get more vulnerable to disease. And there was bad weather. There was a lot of rain last year. So there's oh. a shortage blooming right now and it cannot be solved very quickly because these are trees. Trees take time before, between planting and beginning to produce. And nobody thought about this. Nobody planned for it. Because wow. cocoa was so cheap that the whole world, but especially Europe and North America, started consuming more and more of uh, products. Cheap, right. Made from it. Yeah, it was cheap, it was affordable. And nobody thought about securing long-term supply. Again, wow. no long-term planning whatsoever. You know, these people should go take a course on long-term planning <laughs> in China. China thinks a little differently. I don't agree with their humanitarian policies, but they got China first, and they think in uh, decades upon think decades. Right. They think of 100 it's years. It's a very important skill. Um, the U.S. Uh, thinks in terms of the next election, and they don't even at think most. that far. Yeah. At most. Um, no. Well, Irina, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate your time so much. Yeah, so, me too. I love spending some time with you, chatting. Hey, I'll see you Monday when we uh, when yeah. by the time this comes out, we would have talked to Robert Bryce. That'll be a lot Yay. of fun. All right.